The views and opinion of this broadcast are those of Col- uh, Colerain Game Day and not necessarily those of Northwest School District, Colerain High School, or Colerain Football. Enjoy the game. And welcome to 8801 Chevy Road, Colerain High School. It's Colerain Game Day with WeAreCorner.com and the Colerain Boosters. Presentation of Colerain Football as the Colerain Cardinals come down the stairs. Dressed all in black to host the Oak Hills Highlanders. Brandon Wyatt alongside Brian Wyatt here as both teams started the year 0-2. Both teams looking for their opening victory of the 2023 campaign. Yeah, we see Oak Hills also comes in here, as you said, with no wins, 0-2. They played Turpin and Mason, and they got beat 31-24 and 24-14. So unlike Colerain's losses, their offenses has scored a little bit. Looking for a little bit of a change for Colerain tonight. See if we can get the offense rolling. Again, Cardinals in all black with the white helmets. Oak Hills on all white with black helmets. And for the third consecutive week, it, let's hope it means a different outcome on the field. The Colerain Cardinals have won the toss. For the third consecutive week, they will defer. So it will be the Highlanders with the opening kick. Yeah, before we get started, special thanks. This is my first week back. I have other uh, otherwise couldn't make it. Uh, Brandon, you held down the fort along with Mike and appreciate it. Now, Mike's not he couldn't make it tonight, so kind of both of us pulling double duty. But I appreciate you uh, kind of going solo on the mic last la- last couple of weeks. Or, uh, it, it's great to do what we do, and, 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 you know, this is our, what, 15th year of broadcasting. You joined us about year 10. So uh, hopefully we got something to talk about tonight. You can reach us in the booth at RadioWeAreCorrain.com. And as always, thanks to Lenny Lopez listening in from Corona, California. Although I've just done the math to realize he's three hours behind. So he's like, he's watching this game at 4 o'clock. I've ne- all these years, he's... You've th- never put that I've together? I've never put that together until right now. Anyways. Two <laughs> Highlanders. So I'm going to apologize ahead of time. They're making me run to the camera. I am terrible at it. Max, I can't. Max Supe and Ian and Daniels back deep to return. I tell you what, they are looking into a very strong sun at this point. A nice high kick would be. It's going to be tough to field. Equipment issue being sorted out with Corey Myrick. Done so. I don't. We, there's not, neither team has that much stats wise, except that Max Supe is pretty much everything for the Oak Hills Highlanders, and he's going to be the one returning this kick. Fields at about his own 10, looking to get the edge. Cuts it back and breaks one tackle, still on his feet down the sidelines. It'll be McAfee knocking him out of near midfield. Yeah, it was a nice return, and it was set up. But uh, one of the Colerain Cardinals stayed home and turned it back inside, but the trailing defense just missed the tackle. And I was going to say, we, last week we saw the Cardinals trap Middletown. All, f- all of the first half in their own end started every possession inside Middletown territory, but only came away with three points. Oak Hills sh- kind of flips seven. that narrative here as they're just short of midfield. They'll start their own possession at their own 47-yard line. Yeah, both teams could be running out of shotgun, so the ball's going to be up in the air a lot tonight. Roll. Short little hook. And they'll take about the four or five yards on the pass by Will Krause. Yeah, just a nice little timing route to the outside. He caught it about a a six, seven-yard gain, but then his own momentum brought him back. He's forced out for about a four-yard gain. But it does take it into Colerain territory. Second down and six, ball at the Colerain 49. Off fake. Nope, it's handed off. Still on his feet, pushing. Pile close to the line to gain. Damar Parker Jr. with the carry. He will be about a yard short. A little slow with the whistle. I mean, the, the effort was there. But again, running through the initial contact, picking up yards after that. It's going to make the uh, just a simple third down and one. He was, he was hit at the line of scrimmage, just ran through it.
Double stack out of the gun. They're gonna hand it off straight up the middle. Parker again stopped before at the line the of scrimmage. Contact, the contact is in the back is at yep. the line of scrimmage, but it's not really from the front. He's being tackled from the side. Allowing his momentum to fall forward for about two yards. Yeah. And a first down. They're reaching in with those arm tackles. They can't get underneath in the low man because good offensive line play so far. First down Highlanders to the Cardinal 41. Quads two to either side. Quick throw. Stop. Route to the sidelines. Incomplete. Not sure if the receiver stopped too late and the pass is behind him or the pass is just behind him. It's almost the same play that they ran on first down last time. Just a little quick little seven, eight yard out. Pass was a little bit closer to the sidelines, but it did go directly through his hands. That ball should have been caught. Coring catches a break. Yeah. Second down and ten. Pistol formation now. Fakes a handoff, rolling. Finds a man in the flat. Nice catch. Open space. But Fumble. Fumbled. Fumbled. And the Cardinals recover. Great play all around. Nice little ball fake. Get Jeremiah Triggs in open field in the flat. Had the first down, but the ball is knocked away. And it'll be number eight, Greg Williams, with the recovery. Was it Cooper Craig that made the hit? Kind of hard to see. We don't have replay here. It's single camera. But it was a nice little play action. They found him just a little release to the outside, but that defense closed quick. So Cole Rain's going to start their first possession at their own 25. 10 4 left to play in this first quarter. Loris Barnes, the sophomore quarterback, with Tristan Cornest next to him and trips to the left with a single receiver right. Get a referee's whistle. One of the Cardinals didn't have his mouthpiece in. Since this is the first offensive play, they're going to kind of let that go. He gets it in. Snap is back. And good play there. Heath Anderson just a little one-on-one -on -one backside hook intended for Terrell Burton. He probably had the five-yard pickup if he makes the catch, but Knocked down the line of scrimmage. Well, and there was no contact by that offensive line, so there's no rush. He just kind of stood in one place and timed that. A, a great timing by the outside linebacker. We'll stick it quickly to the line. Formation the same. So it wasn't a mouthpiece problem. He actually had two mouthpieces, and one was hanging from his uh, face mask. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to know why. Barnes takes it, holds, hands off up the middle. Cornest, good hole initially, but it closes quickly. He'll get about three, maybe four on the carry. Ball carry for the Cardinals, Tristan Cornest. So a manageable third down and six. The One thing I've seen the last couple of games, correct me if I'm wrong, Brandon, the quarterback really doesn't keep it that much. No. I almost like to see him a bigger threat running the ball. but They need the 35 for a first down here, though. Look to the sidelines for a change of play. Snap is back. Back to Burton, and he's fighting. Did he get the line? He needs the 35. It depends where the spot is. And His foot got down. Yes. Exactly the 35. And that ball looked like it was tipped again, also. First down, Cardinals to the 35. Quick little screen to the outside. And Cardinals got lucky that was called incomplete. Intended for number 16. Yeah, a little bubble, little bubble screen to the side. And he dropped it, but, you know, he's got to play that ball. He, he, he was – well, he kind of did. He just didn't pick it up. He tried to. Oak Hills was looking for a, a backward pass right there, but the quarterback is deep in the shotgun. So it, it was a f incomplete forward pass, second down and ten. Snap is back. They'll run the same play, same 
receiver. He's going to look down the sidelines and pick about four yards on the play. So we had third and six on the last set of downs. It'll be exactly the same here. Sir Ronald Floyd on the catch for the Cardinals. Third down and six. They'll now flip the formation the other way. Plenty of time on the play clock. They look to the sideline. Oak Hill's making no adjustments on the defense. Floyd with the catch and tries to make a man miss. Good play, Ethan Ritter tracks him down. The yeah, ball was a little bit behind and made him turn around as momentum going back and lost his footing. Yeah, and that was the play was they had one man to beat and he didn't beat him because it was actually pretty good blocking there by Burton on the edge. If he gets by that one man, he's got the first down, but good job by Ritter to contain him. Cooper Creek. Supe back for the Highlanders. Creek gets it. Punts away. It's a little, not very good in the air, but gets a good bounce. Oh, would have been a better bounce if the Colerain player didn't touch it a little bit prematurely. you got to know where the ball's at, but not a bad kick, not a that's, bad outcome. That, that's one where it's it's, a, it's an oblong ball. He's trying to get out of the way. He just kind of takes a bounce back into him. Well, and the ball wouldn't kick straight down the field, so he didn't expect it to be on that side. So Cardinals get a first down, but not much more out of the turnover. Highlanders will take over at their own 34. First down and 10 on the 34 for the Highlanders. So again, out of the shotgun. Hand off up the middle, and again, met at the line of scrimmage. He's going to fall forward about two yards for the Namar Parker Jr. I've said it for years, never trust a roster or a, or, a, or a coach. They list him at six foot 187. He looks bigger than that. Second down and eight. And a good tackle there by Brandon Smith, not even say the other end of the spectrum. Brandon Smith listed at 5'8", 157, but he's been the starting middle linebacker for the Cardinals all season. Quick release. Supe finds it. He's got enough for a first down. Just across midfield. That was just a simple read. This They sent the linebacker on that side, and Supe just went to the spot with the linebacker left. Davis makes knocks him out of bounds, but not before they get into Coleraine territory. First down and 10. Ball on the 48th Coleraine Cardinals. 7.28 left to play in the first quarter. Still no score. Yeah, you can't let him come free off the line. Your leading receiver, he, he just stepped off, and there was nobody there for Fake it, and again, same play they got the first down and then fumbled on. Get it to the flat. First down, Jeremiah Triggs. Complete pass to Oak Hills, Jeremiah Triggs. Oak Hills, maybe five years ago, went to this spread offense that Colerain's trying now, and it kind of shows. You can do a little bit of play fakes, a little bit more uh, deception when you've got a little bit more experience in the offense, and it, it showed in those last couple of plays. Will Krause, the trigger man, that quarterback. He's got an empty backfield here. Sends a man a motion, jet sweep. Fake, keeps it up the middle, and he's going to cross the 30-yard line. He makes the perfect read right there. They overplayed the running back. Assignment football. He reads the end and picks up a, a good first down, second down and two. Just under seven to play in the first quarter. Second possession for the Highlanders. First ended in a fumble. Krause hands it off up the middle. Still on his feet. Hit in the backfield, but again, Parker Jr. falls forward for a first down. Even when the Oak Hills fumbled away in that in, in, in that first possession, they were moving the ball in cold rain. No big plays, but getting some chunk yardage on first down made it makes it a lot easier. So first down at the 21 of the Cardinals for the Highlanders. 
Yep. Putting again in a good drive here, trying to come away with some point, the first points. Play fake. Drop back throw, looking to the back of the end zone. I think that was more of a throw away by Will Krause. Yeah, they go play action. It was well covered by the Cole Green defensive backs right there. Um, well, the deepest guy was at the goal line. Looked up like there was some, maybe been an intended receiver behind him, and it just really went through the back of the engine. So it was, I think it's a good play there by Krause. Either that or he had some friends in the student section down there. Yeah, but they go to a different school. That's well, the Cole Rain student section. It can happen. Probably not. Second down and 10 from the 21 of Cole Rain. Highlanders now with two backs and a tight end in the backfield. We're going to send one in motion. Down the field makes the initial guy miss, and Supe is going to pick up about four, maybe five yards. And this is that was the, really the kind of, not the exact play, but the play that, that LaSalle really kind of took advantage of. Get a guy, get the back out of the backfield and make the middle linebacker chase him. And they just were not there all night against LaSalle. That's really where they opened it up with the, the back out of the backfield. Well, I'm sure Oak Hill saw that in film and looked to exploit it themselves. They'll pick up five here. It'll be third down and five from the 16. They need the 11 for a first down. Fake handoff looking downfield. Tight end releases, finds a seam. And again, Jeremiah Triggs, Jeremiah Triggs in the flat the off the play action for a first down. I tell you, it was a little bit of a flinch, but uh, for me, they had two guys moving. They had the uh, Supe in motion right there, and right before the snap, the uh, running back, running back moved goal. also. Yeah. Referees missed that, but it was subtle. It was subtle, but it, it was there. It was a move forward. It was almost like he relaxed, like he thought there was going to be an audible. So first and goal from the five. They'll spread him out two to either side, send Parker in motion, and Krause keeps it up the middle. He's met initially through the initial tackle from Smith. He's down. He gets about halfway to the goal line. It'll be second and goal from the two and a half. Zane Battle Holmes. On the tackle for Corrine. Zane Battle Holmes, who Davis Lyman has made a bunch of plays so far this year with the tackle for the Cardinals. Second and goal. Still spread way out. Play action. Throw back other side out of the backfield. Touchdown to Mar Parker Jr. Ethan Ritter. Pass yep, use that motion again against the Coring Cardinals. They chase the uh, chase the running back to the right. They throw back to the left. Really impressed the way uh, Oak Hills uses multiple weapons. It's not one guy that they're relying on. We saw in their stats uh, er earlier, their first two games, Supe makes a lot of their plays, but really it was the other running backs, tight ends right there on that possession. Hunter Shouse on for the extra point. Josh Glover, the Snap is back, hold is down, kick is good. So with 4.06 to play in the first quarter, Oak Hills leads Coleraine 7 to nothing. So both teams came up empty on their opening possession. Highlanders. Scored on their well, second. The See if the Cardinals can answer here. Yeah, we kind of looked at that going into the game. Oak Hills has two losses, but they, are, they have scored points on some good ball clubs. Colerain stopped them on that first possession, but I don't know if as much as a Colerain stop as a Oak Hills mistake. They were moving the ball before that fumble, and they moved it easily on that second drive. See if Cole Rain can answer back with a big special teams play. Cameron Evans, Ricardo Lofton back deep for the Cardinals. Back to receive for the Cardinals, Ricardo Lofton. Slight wind behind the kicker. Not much happening tonight weather-wise. Jackson Dorso to kick off for the Highlanders, which is something you don't see often in high school, especially 
nowadays they have two different kickers before kickoff and field goals. Kick is up. It's short. Evan's going to take it on a bounce. No, Lofton's going to take it on the bounce. Trying to find something hit initially. And it's going to get caught short of the 20-yard line. Well, if you don't catch it in the air like that, you, you rely on that oblong ball we talked about earlier, taking a hop, and that little bit of delay allowed the Oak Hills Highlanders special teams to get down there in coverage. Also, the fact that getting the ball is most important, so you're, you're okay with him making sure the ball's getting caught. But if, if Evans lets Lofton catch it himself instead of going back for it, he's got an extra blocker, maybe gets through that seam. Yeah. But... Yeah, when it's bouncing like that, you just want anybody yeah, to get the, the most ball. Important, most important thing is getting the ball. So, Cardinals trips to the top of the screen. Pistol formation. Start at their own 17-yard line. Snap is back. Hand off Cornist, and he has minimal... Space to go. He gets about Justin a yard. Cornish, the ball carry for Cole Rain. Cole Rain trying to establish the run. You're going to give him almost two on that. He's second down and nine. Ball on the 18. I don't know who to believe. The clock is saying 18. It looks like the 19. It's two yards. Barnes under pressure, keeps it going, and does a good job of just kind of throwing it away. Yeah, they were looking for that quick out again. They've tried that three times, and a little wow. bit of a miscommunication. Right. It was kind of covered, and he was looking for the wide receiver to release right there. I think the miscommunication, I think that was supposed to be a different pattern. A right curl there. and go, <laughs> yeah. and he didn't go. So third down and nine for the Cardinals. Third down and nine. So Oak Hill's playing a lot of matchup man right here. Almost just like just just make him respect the deep ball right here. There's the look. Burton with the catch. And a first down. Three in the pattern right there. Burton just found a little seam behind the linebackers. Picked up about three more yards than he needed to. First down Cardinals out to the 33. I tell you, when given a little bit of time, quarterback has shown he can throw the ball. Just a sophomore. Hand off Cornus. Nothing going inside. Breaks one tackle. Can't break another. And he's going to lose a yard. Tristan Cornus, the carrier for... <laughs> <laughs> so I saw something. I don't know if you guys, if you, if you could pick that up in the camera. One of the Oak Hills players' helmets came off, and one of the Coleraine Cardinals looked like he was talking into the face mask, walking away. I'm going, don't get in trouble for taunting. His helmet, they were stuck together. He wasn't yelling at the helmet, talking into the face mask. The face mask was stuck together. That was funny. Second 11 for the Cardinals. Under pressure. And sacked. Again, somebody ran the wrong pattern right there. The quarterback turns to look into his uh, trips to the right. And, and coach is screaming at his wide receivers. He goes to throw that, and it just every single wide receiver that was sitting there for a little, some type of bubble screen had their back turned. They're all setting up to block, no one to catch. Third down and 18. Ball so it's a sack in third and 18. Ethan, excuse me, Cooper Harrison with the tackle and the sack. Timeout, Coleraine play clock was getting dangerously close to the end. So third and 18 Cardinals, 138 well, Cardinal Nation, we'd like to, invite you to, to play in the half. The, or, excuse me, the quarter. And this is a Cardinal offense Without their expected starting quarterback, without their number one returning wide receiver, and without their re returning tight end. Sophomore trying to get it done here. And it doesn't do him any favors when the receivers have run the wrong round on back-to-back -back plays. 
Yeah, it, it's first year in the new system, but you would think by game three, you can at least get the plays run, whether you're getting beat physically or not. Mentally, should be in it. But again, this uh, this quarterback force forced into start, starting duty in week one. So just a sophomore, but he's got two games under his belt. Just as long as we, we're looking just to see some growth, but needs help from his teammates. The Colerain's going to need to get all the way. Their ball's at the 24. They're going to need to get all the way to the 43. Two receivers are on either side of the formation. They'll come in bunch tight now. Snap his back. Barnes looks to throw. He's got a huff across on the shallow. On the shallow. Would have been a good gain on first or second down, but on third down, it's going to be short of the line of the game. Cardinals are going to have fourth and long and forced to punt. Yeah, he picked up almost nine yards, ten yards on that. And you're right. If, if that's run on first down, fine. But you you needed 23, not 10. But again, positive play. And again, the defense is doing the same thing. They're let, that's all defense is letting you make the play in front of them so they can make the tackle. Fourth and 13. Back to kick for Colerain, Cooper Creek. Cooper Creek goats, and it's going to be high in the air. That hit it. That hit it. Oak Hills player. That hit number 14 who had his back turned off a helmet. That's going to be a Colerain ball right there. Yep, and that's the signal. Up by number Cooper, wow. I, that, that, that's really hard to blame on that player. I mean, your your return man. Every team has got that that keyword: Peter, poison, whatever. Get away from the ball, but that ball just clipped him right. You know, he looks up in the air, and that ball just clipped off his helmet. Uh, referees are getting together to discuss something. Flag. Cooper Creek tried to sell it as the punter. I think he got the five yard right into the kicker. He tried to sell it like it was roughing the kicker. I don't even know if it was running into the kicker, but he sold it enough to get a penalty called. Well, that's gonna is that add five yards or you just decline that and take the That's what the coaches are trying to find out. Is that tacked on or is that uh declined? Just Take the outcome of the play and decline it. Yeah, I you don't re kick he, it. He, he just wants to make sure if he can get the five yards added on. I mean, Cooper Creek really tried to sell that as a 15er. Well, Cooper Creek only being six foot eight. Yeah. <laughs> Not many guys in this, this field's going to knock him down, so the acting job had to be really good, but he got five yards out of it. Maybe. Now, the, it the, wouldn't have been enough for a first This referee is going to his thing, whether they, they, they the referees don't know. Oh, and it's good that they're getting together to double check. Well, somebody's, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to take a moment out for you. But yeah, you, it's simple. You just decline. You either take the outcome and decline it, or you take the five yards and re-kick it, which is be stupid if you do it. So you just decline the penalty. Colerain's ball. They are not discussing that. They're asking whether he gets the five yards on addition. They don't confirm no, that's what, it, so that's he That's exactly what I was saying. Cardinals switch it up. Bill kills ball, first and 10 on the 37. Greg Williams. Oh, and they brought in a couple extra tight end fullbacks. It's, it's basically this. It's the, a wildcat. Well, I was going to say, it's the back. It's the linebacking core for the Cardinals on the field. And a wildcat formation with Greg Williams. And they jump off sides. The penalty flag. False start, go ring. Just that little bit of difference in the cadence from the quarterback to the backup quarterback coming in now is kind of thrown off. First and 15 on the 42. And that happened week one against LaSalle. He, and, again, I think week one against LaSalle, there was confusion. I think half the team was going on the clap, half the team was going on the on the sound. Williams takes it. He's just going to go right. Try to find some space. Makes one man miss. Still on his feet. And he gets right near the original line yeah. of scrimmage. He got the five yards back. So it'll be second down and ten. Taken down by Oak Hills number ten, Max Rhodes. 
And also Julian Harris. The thing with this uh, this formation, pretty much Oak Hills can sell out on the run. You say that. Greg Williams. That's right. He did, did throw the ball. Sure did throw a pass. He was intercepted, but he did throw a pass. Snap back. Williams takes it. And it gets about four, maybe five yards. Greg Williams, the ball carry for the Cardinals. Not pretty. Not pretty, but we'll take it. Let's give him six. Third and four. Oak Hills, number 10, Max Rhodes. Yeah, Oak Hills defensive line complaining a little bit there. there might, that same offensive lineman might have flexed a little bit on that play. Third and four. And that will be the end of the first quarter after one quarter of play here. No kill seven, Coleraine zero. And what's amazing, you get two teams pretty much running out of the shotgun primarily, and that was a pretty quick quarter. There's not a lot of incompletions, there, and both teams have main, uh, uh, mainly been on the ground. I mean, no kills is thrown around, but they're not throwing it deep where you have a high incompletion percentage. It's all, it's almost exclusive. Oh, hang on, we got a throw for Doe, and it's just out of my league. Okay, it's theirs. It has nothing to do with anything. A little fundraiser for the Cool Rain Cardinals. $50 it's if not. he makes it's it. It's an ad for a credit union. But the young man throwing the ball gets $50. Yeah, from a credit union. It's an it's a advertising. Which no one can see. No one can see. the. Uh, you can just see a hula hoop in the air. <laughs> I know. I, I warned you ahead of time. I, we got a single camera that has been discontinued by the manufacturers and me running it. It's not going to be pretty. Third and four for the Cardinals at their Highlander 31. I would say this is this is two down territory. And if not, you're faking the punt. Again, play clock running. They got plenty of time. 15 seconds. Still in that Wildcat formation. Fakes to Myra, keeps it, gets the edge. Williams stays on his feet, across the 25, the first down. Good, good block on the outside. The young man who got caught last time jumping off sides is 58, Jawante Harris. Sealed that corner. It's more of an edge. First and ten, ball First. 23. You know, I miss doing games with you and being corrected on everything well, I say. I mean, if you're, if if you're, I, yeah, as long as I'm wrong on everything, you, you can correct me. If you weren't incorrect so often, I wouldn't need to. First and ten, Cardinals. Williams takes it, and he's going to throw. Throws it up, and Myrick has it knocked away. Here's the thing. Greg Williams is immediately throwing himself. He threw a ball, a deep ball deep. If he just throws it short, no, but everyone from Oak Hills is backing up like Myrick's going to go deep. And if he just throws it short, Myrick comes back to it. There's no one there. Well, he was almost lucky that he threw that dead duck right there, and, 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 and it fluttered out there because if he throws it where the wide receiver's supposed to be, the safety was just camping on that. But, yeah, if, if that keeps – I'll take an incomplete pass there if that keeps the safeties honest. He's going to take it and go. Breaks one tackle, stays on his feet. Picks up about four. Greg Williams, the ball carrier for Cole Rain. Well, they're getting what they want. Uh, they're getting Thunder past by the by initial by tackle one. and getting one-on-one nice. on one with the defensive back. And right now, Oak Hills has made that tackle. But I'll take I'll take Three, Williams one on one against almost anybody in this league. If he breaks just that one tackle, he's gone. So again, two down territory, third down and about seven. Takes it, goes left, breaks one tackle, breaks to another. He's going to be short to the line of the game, but I got to think this Greg Williams, the ball four down territory. Taken down by Oak Hills number five. Cooper Harrison. Yep, and I'll stay with it. Fourth and three. Fourth down and three, ball on the 16. Looks like Corey's going to use another timeout. Yeah, I think this one is. It's fourth down, and I think they just want to get Greg Williams a breather here. Second 
Timeout, Coleraine. Only scoring for Coleraine this season have been two field goals, so I don't know what his range is. This is about – he was – in warm-ups, he's kicked them for 45, so he has range. It's not probably – it's probably 50% from 45 yards, so, but he is within that range. So, but this, you know, this is a good early coach's decision, only down one score. If you get this, emotionally, you put your team back into this. I'm afraid, though, if they don't get it, it could have the opposite effect. But I guess that's, that's so, why, so like that's why every, I'm a key. Every fourth down attempt that fell short. Well, no, I mean, there, there, there are some w that are higher degrees of importance and emotional timing. Well, last week it was fourth and one inside Middletown territory, and they got absolutely nothing lost a yard on the quarterback sneak. You know, I'd almost like to see them. They faked this jet sweep a couple times, and William, Williams run the ball every time except for that one pass. Back, takes it, nope. ran a counter, and they were ready for it. Tried to catch Oak Hills there. They did a little counter step and tried to go the other way, but Oak Hills was able to cover it up. Well, they knew nobody else in the stadium was getting the ball, so they overplayed the man. They, you had your, your wing back, your wide receiver, one-on-one. -on -one. They needed some type of motion or fake there. I, I don't think they were yeah. just – they were camping on it. They were camping. But – Oak Hills is going to take over in the, in the deepest possession right now. They're at their own 16 with 10-13 left to play. So if Coleraine can get a stop down here or some type of turnover, they really, they really need, to, need the day defense to step up here. But with all those offensive players playing on deep, or all those defensive players playing on offense, you got a bunch of subs right there and a broken tackle. And the ball's near midfield. The big pass for Oak Hills, Elias Wheeler. Yeah, just, just a simple out. Misses one tackle. I have no 88 on my roster. My roster but my roster also stops at 63. First and 10 for on the 47. Elias Wheeler. All right. Senior. There you go. Got pushed, and Jaden Staley thought he would go out of bounds. He kept his feet in bounds and got all the way to the 42. Handoff Parker, and he has Nothing. no Barely to the line of scrimmage. DeAndre Turner with a big play. DeMar Parker Jr., the ball carrier for Oak Hills. So, DeMar stops by DeAndre. DeAndre. by Cardinal Saheed Davis. Saheed Davis cleaned it up. Also, DeAndre Turner on the Yeah, top. Turner did the dirty work, beat his man off the ball. Well, he's DeAndre Turner's the nose guard. Down. Yeah, that's exactly, yeah. He ties him up and see Davis. He gets lost in the pile, and the linebackers coming in. The numbers are a little bit more visible to the guy running the PA. So he does lose a half yard. They're calling it. No. Didn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. Super in motion. Takes it, looks backside, and completion. Jeremiah Triggs. Jeremiah Triggs. Just again, just a little stop route. Button oh, hook pits up about Staley. six, makes it third and four in Cardinal territory. Also, Silas Murphy. Yeah, with the, with the way their defense did, this might be again two down territory for them. But Corain hasn't done much offensively. Do you, you got the lead, pin you, them deep. You trust your offense. I, I yeah, I think, I think this is two down territory. Soupy in the backfield this time. Sets up. Kraus rolling. Hits Supe right at the line of game. We'll see where he's officially marked. Yeah, he got about a yard and a half past the uh, yard to get right there. Needed the, needed the 43. Got the 43. That was just good patience by the quarterback. They brought him out of and brought uh, the Supe out of the wide receiver out of the backfield. And First just waited, and waited, and waited, waited, waited until he, until he found an open area. Kraus rolls. He's under pressure. Gets it over top. 
Good thing the pressure came. Supe was open. Good pressure by Zane Battle Holmes. Yeah, not sure who the, the safety was looking at right there. Wide receiver was wide open, but there is a there is a flag on the field. It's going to be an offsides against the Coring Cardinals. Didn't see any movement. Must have been lined up offsides. And so not only is that five yards, but it's a repeat of first down. It's a flag on the play. Outside, Second out at five on the 39. So first and five for the Highlanders. Kraus, empty backfield. Looks immediately at the, gets a little cross up and a good route. Cardinals, everyone jumped the immediate button hook, hits the guy in the seam underneath. And a first down for Josh Glover. Yeah, good read by the quarterback. First and 10, no kills on the 12. So it's first down on the 12 yard line. Correction, 17 yards. Oh, 17. 17. I'm looking through the lens, listen to the PA guy. Don't listen to the PA guy. Let me do it. Parker in motion. Setting up screen. It's not there. And Kraus throws away. Well, I assume he was setting up screen. Because Zane Battle Holmes came free like it was a screen. But I didn't see an intended receiver. I don't know if the wide receiver screen was supposed to come in the middle and didn't. We saw that earlier for Corain where no receiver ran the route on the screen. Oak Hills returns the favor. It didn't look like anyone ran the route for the screen there. So second and ten for the Highlanders. Kraus takes the snap, hands it off. Parker met at the line of scrimmage. Drags a defender down just across the 15, maybe the 14-yard line. Again, more yards after contact right there. Shows a little bit of strength, pushes that pile. The Highlanders do not have a field goal attempt on the season. They can get a first down. All right, they can get a first down, but... With no field goal attempt in the season, you wonder if this is all automatically four down territory. Kraus looks under pressure, drops it down, looking, tucks it, and it's going to depend where he stepped out. Well, keep it for kills, number 15, Will Kraus. I think he's going to be about a yard short. Kind of hard to tell from this. Yeah, kind of hard to tell from this angle. They will go for it. Ball on the nine yard line. Fourth down. See if they try to draw Colerain off sides. And they do. Play on the play. And one of the most obvious situations in football. When you've got third and short, fourth and short, team runs up there. In Pee Wee football, watch the ball, watch the ball, watch the ball. First and goal from the four. So first and goal for the Highlanders, just under eight to play in the first half. Highlanders lead 7-0. Fakes the handoff, rolls, and nearly oh. picked off. Corey Myrick with a good read and nearly picked off. He almost had looked like Myrick was just spying, knowing that Supi is like one He one was a half step from a pick six right there. Second and goal, ball on the four. Second and goal from the four for the Highlanders. But you know what? Second and four, a situation like this might play into the cool ring. They've done pretty good against the run. But again, Oak Hills has a lot of weapons with this motion using tight ends and, and the wingbacks. 
Hand off Parker, and looks like he might have lost the yard or two. Lost the yard or two and his helmet. So that's going to take your starting running back out of the play. No, that was, that was a Cardinal. Is that a Cardinal helmet? Cardinal. Oh. Cardinals are wearing white helmets. The helmet that came off was white, not the black helmet. I'm looking through this little TV lens. You can look through both. Oh, yeah. I'm trying. So third, I will tell you how much I hate third running Third and goal from the five. <laughs> Tight end has been in the flat has been a big target for the Highlanders. See what they do here. Quick look and a backside slant for a touchdown to Supe. And he got their leading receiver one-on-one -on -one with the defense back, and it's just a simple slant. They fake the run, and he just steps inside the defensive back. Very simple play. And that is actually the high percent. Everyone – you know, even at the NFL level, you'll see a lot of teams, they throw the backs at the goal line, that goal line fades. And that's actually one of the worst plays you can run because you got a one spot, one receiver going to the back of the end zone, so you create a bunch of defenders. One of the best plays you can actually run on the goal line is that quick goal line in or, in or out. Yeah, he just reads where the defender is at and just takes the feel off him. The extra, point is extra point is good with 7.31 to play in the first half. It's Oak Kills 14, scoring zero. Oak Kills 14, scoring nothing. Well, at this point, you know, Cole Rink can, with the, it's a struggle in the offense, they need to answer here. Two scores you can get back into the ball game. They let, they let Oak Kills get one, another one ahead, and it's going to be it's, – it's an uphill battle already. In order to keep the Cardinals at the top of their game, they could do the same for you. UC Health's world-class physicians diagnose and treat all of orthopedic, spine, hand, joint trauma in sports medicine conditions. You can find out more at their website at uchealth.com. I'm really surprised they haven't. They, they've given him time to throw the ball, that they haven't attempted many deep balls. The only one they really did was when they had their uh, the backup quarterback running back in there. So Cole Rain will be looking into the sun for this Back return. For Probably be the last return, too, that uh, they'll Number have to battle that. Lofton. Lofton Evans back deep for the Cardinals. We haven't seen much of a deep, deep leg. And I, I'd almost bring the return men up about Number 10 yards. Jackson Dorsal. Whatever I do, I get those two little kids out of the back of the end zone. And I don't think those, those two little kids are having an argument. I don't think they realize the game's about to restart. Uh, they got out. Kick is up, and it's a short pop-up. Greg Williams is going to field it as the up man and gets it across the 30, about the 32. The yeah, special teams needs to make an adjustment right there. This guy doesn't have a big leg. He's going to drop it at about the 15, 20-yard line. And at that point, if it's over your head, it's rolling into the end zone. But they've yet to position themselves where they could catch one cleanly. 7-27 in the first half. Oak Hills 14, Corain 0. It'll be first and 10, Corain. Cardinals will roll with their regular offense now. Barnes looks this for uh, Audible to the sidelines. Snap back. Quick back. He's going to be a screen. Trying to find some space. Breaks one tackle does O'Brien. Going to pick up about four, maybe five yards on the play. Ryan O'Brien. That's a good name. Ryan O'Brien. Going to give him four officially. Second and six. Coring's trying to set up those bubble screens, get their athletes in space, but it's, it's slightly slow developing. Barnes takes it, hands it off Cornist, and he had some space, but a good tackle on the, by on the carry for Coring. Ethan Ryder, Ritter, and a lose the yard. 
Ethan Ritter. Yeah, they're just getting no one blocked on that second level in the running situation. So a third down and long. They're going to need eight. And officially they lost it too. Barnes takes it. Looks. Has a receiver catch. And... Not going to be enough for the, the first Nash, down. The Cardinals, number 16, Sir Ronald Floyd, Sir Ronald Floyd with the catch in the flat, but maybe two, yeah. three yards, not much Ladies more. He checked down to his secondary receiver. He had a late breaking open one there in the post pattern. You almost got to take that chance. You had one on one coverage down there. Where if it's intercepted, it's almost as good as a punt. But you, you dump off like that, take that safe throw, there, there, there was no chance of him getting any yards. So Cooper Krieg to punt again. This time Oak Hills is going to put two players back. Krieg has kind of scattered his kicks. It's a high one, but it's going to be wide and out of bounds. Let's see where this one actually went out of bounds. It hit about the 30-yard line. No, nope, a little deeper than that because referee will go all the way back where it hits. That's actually farther than it went out of bounds. He'll walk it up. And, and this is how they do it. I, I swear. I'm not sure. I'm not sure who the, the young man on the sidelines there in the white shirt. I don't think he's part of the, the staff. He might be a teacher, but he he pointed out to where it was gonna be, and the referee walked within six inches. I'm telling you, the Cardinals just got about 15, not 15, about 10 yards there. That's where the ball hit out of bounds. No, I'm, that's that's, that's uh, I don't think that's no. right. I'll take it. Don't get me wrong. Well, I think the Cardinals Got at least five to ten yards there on a bad spot by the referee of the silence. But what it is, first down Highlanders. Take it, set up screen, backside, Supe gets a block and got some space down the cross midfield into Cardinal territory. They did exactly what Cardinals are trying to do, a little tunnel screen right there. But when you've got several years in an offense, the execution's a little bit cleaner and really didn't do anything but have decent blocking in front of them. So first time Highlanders in Cardinal territory. Handoff Parker. He's met at the line of scrimmage. And this time has nowhere to go. So no gain on the play. Maybe a loss. Javante Burnett on the tackle for Corey. Burnett with the tackle. Third down 11 on the 42. So we'll be officially a loss of 11, or a loss of one second and 11. 428 left to play till halftime. Corey trying to keep this within two scores. Highlanders will take their time. No real rush on there. Side and big play in the backfield. Hayden Danielson read that all the way. He saw the guard pull and immediately filled and hit Parker. Parker lucky he got the handoff before he was hit. Yeah, he timed that per perfectly. And I tell you what, I was looking at the roster to see who that was, and they always list their position. Hayden Danielson listed as a running back, middle linebacker, athlete. He missed. He missed. Week one with with an injury and they heavily rotated him. He started last year as a sophomore at middle linebacker for the Cardinals. So third down and 14? Thereabouts. Empty backfield. They'll set up screen backside. And Highlanders got lucky that Greg Williams isn't eight feet tall. Because he read that screen right away. Well, I think the high, I, I might give him credit for doing something he didn't, but I think the Oak Hills Highlander wide receiver saw that coming and he was going to get hit and didn't catch that on purpose. Let that go through his hand for the incomplete also, pass. Well, I saw no one on Corian is going to be eight feet tall. But if Greg yeah. Williams was, he had that interception. Well, our punter's close. Last so year, I tell you what, you got the, you, they got the. Cameron Evans is going to be back, but you got the dangerous weapon punting for Oak Hills, and he shanked it. Get away, Cole Rain. Get away, get away, get away. I don't really have to. That's going to be 
We'll see where he walks it up. That might be less than 10 yards. It'll be first and 10, Corey. Yep, it'll be just yeah. about 10 yards. Right at the 35-yard line? Yep. It's about a 10-yard punt for the Highlanders. Cardinals have one timeout and 329 to work with here in yeah. the first half. That's the only thing they had to burn a couple timeouts early on that those crucial fourth down plays. And it's the first half. I, you don't. You use. You want to use them if you got them. Yeah. You don't want to take them into the locker room, but and you never plan on having the. Well, three twenty nine is a lot of time. So. Yes. The timeouts really shouldn't. Are really not an issue. Barnes takes it. Looks another screen, sets up, and be about four yards again for Ryan O'Brien. Number 21, Ryan running that tunnel screen just like Oak Hills did, but they kind of run it to, to the wide side so that ball takes a lot of time. That's a, you know, for a four-yard pass, that ball's going to travel a long way in the air. Cardinals quickly to the line. Three minutes to play in the half. Takes it, looks. And nearly picked off. Everybody in the building knew that play. They ran one play to the right. They run the exact same play again to the left. And Cole, and Cole Rain gets lucky right there. That defensive back, just he had that red all the way. Owen McChristian on the play for O'Kills. Does stop the clock, 2.52. Oak Hill still does have all three timeouts left. Barnes takes the snap, looks, sets under pressure, and is sacked. Theory, Theory Troxel with the sack. Ring fourth down for the Cardinals. Theory, <laughs> they were looking deep right then. He just kind of held the ball a little bit and, too long. And honestly, he kind of had him in that soft post if he gets the ball off, but can't get it off and he is sacked. We'll be four down. Clock is still running. Oak Hill's okay. electing not to use a timeout, which is interesting. Honestly, in college and high school, you use high snap Krieg. Just going to fall on it. No, still loose. Still loose. It'll be he, first and goal for the Highlanders regardless. We've got a six foot eight punter, and he can't Lewis come down with it. Ball goes over his head. He tries to cover it. It he kicks out. They get about 10 more yards on it. So a huge, huge. I was just about to say, at that level, the clock time is way more important than your timeouts with, with the clock stopping. But with first and goal in two minutes, I don't think the clock matters one minute. Yeah, yeah, it looks like they're going to spot that ball on the nine-yard line. So you're right. It is first and goal. Two minutes, three timeouts. Yeah, the timeouts here for Oak Hills are pretty much irrelevant. They, if they run the... They can do what they want with two minutes is plenty of time. Parker takes it, breaks one tackle. He gets across the five, second and goal. DeMar Parker Jr. on the carry for Oak Hills. Actually, they're going to say he went out before the five to the six. Nope, exactly at the five. Cameron Evans on the tackle for Corey. Clock does stop because he goes out of bounds, but for Oak Hills, it Clock is irrelevant. Second goal from the five. Supe in motion. Looking. Gets it to him in the flat, and Cardinals are there, but can't make the tackle. Supe makes a man miss. They had it. Shahid Davis did a perfect job of staying with his man. But then when the time came, he just misses the tackle. Up for the extra point for Oak Hills. Josh Glover beholding. 
So Heath Davis did everything right except the one thing he needed to do to finish the play that. Well, he turned him in hoping there was a little bit of pursuit there and there was just nobody there. But still, he's one-on-one. -on -one. He stays with him. He doesn't get fooled by the play fake. He follows him perfectly, but Subay but, makes him miss yeah, the point was one, of attack. One of their leading weapons, and you've seen him in the NFL. you got Cooper Cup. you got to go back Don Beebe. It's that guy that you, doesn't look that fast, but he makes plays. Ain't no one know who Don Beebe is. Snap back, hold back, kick is good with 144 to play. It's the Highland in the first half. The Highlanders lead 21 nothing over the Coleraine Cardinals. And that's not to say Don Beebe wasn't a player. Because you're just not going to get anyone understanding a 1990s Buffalo Bills reference, except me. We can talk about Thurman Thomas, Bruce, Bruce Smith. I am talking to you. I know. I'm just saying. You're also talking to 88 other people. All right. Uh, more more recent comparison. Um, New England Patriots. A Super Bowl MVP. What was his name? James White? No. Tom Brady? No. A little wide receiver. I, I know. I'm just giving you a hard time. Because you can't think of his name. Oh, no, I know his name. I just want you to guess. I don't know his name. That's wow. what I'm saying. I'm asking you. Amendola. I don't actually think he was Amendola or. No, um, before that. Before Amendola. Amendola took his spot. Not Edelman. Edelman. Yes, Julian Edelman. No, Edelman took Amendola's spot. but I don't think Edelman actually won it. I think it was all Brady. James White should have won it the one year, but Brady, you know, 28-3. to uh, Kickoff. Covered Ryan O'Brien with it. Trying to find something. Cuts back and had a little bit of space there, but lost his footing. He was brought down just across the 25-yard line. Good play by the Oak Hills. He stayed his lane because he reversed his field there, and if he could have got the corner, there was nobody there. So 137 remaining in the half. Cardinals will have one timeout as they try to get something offensively on the board. 21-0 Highlanders lead as we close in here in the end of the half. Well, and you got to watch out too. Your one thing you don't want to do is give it right back. Give it right back, exactly. You're deep enough in your territory. It took about 13 seconds for the Oak Hill's last touchdown drive. And we saw it week one. LaSalle was back and forth, close game, and then you let one, one play quickly up at the end of the half. Barnes takes its screen past Cornus, trying to find something. Breaks one tackle, has to go. But once he's break that one tackle, the rest of the Highlanders Justin are there to make the play. On the carry for the Cardinals. Kane Powell and Max Rhodes on the tackle for Oak Hills. Clock running, 115. This is Second one of those ones we want to go fast, but not too fast. Yeah, because Oak Hill still has all their three of their timeouts. Barnes, under pressure, steps up. And there's a flag on the field. In the area of a beholding, and that might be way behind the line of scrimmage. So that, that this, could, this could be a big penalty that ends this series. But it's an interesting call for Oak Hills. It is holding on the Cardinals. It is going to be third in about seven. Do you take the down? Or do you take the yardage? Take the Holy yardage. Cardinals. But there's only 57 seconds. Ah, uh, you, you, you. Okay, I see where I see where you're He's going to take the yardage, but now you have to use an extra timeout. And again, the time the time on the clock is what's most valuable. Yeah, Coin can actually just take a knee here. Don't even run, don't even run a play. Make them burn a timeout. Or did they they haven't taken it off. Have they taken a timeout? No, they haven't taken a timeout. But so the clock's going to start. What's the ball no, set? No, there's right? a penalty, so it'll stop. It'll be second down and 20 on the 17. Well, no, I mean, it'll start on the referee's whistle. It won't. Penalty no? stops the play. Okay. Barnes takes. Looks. 
Nothing there, so he throws it at the feet of Lofton. Five seconds off the clock. And it stops on the incompletion. Oak Hills does not have to use a timeout in that entire series. Well, they might here on third down. Third and 20 for the Cardinals. 52 seconds in the half. Oak Hills really playing off the ball. It's two deep safeties. Barnes stops, looks, steps up, runs, still on his feet. He's going to pass the line of scrimmage. Timeout with 42, no, nope, 41 seconds on the clock. Cardinals just... I don't know what happened here. They just ran, the clock is still running. Should be 42 seconds. Timeout, clock continued to run here. Was, like to take a timeout was to called. Our friends, Preston Brown Foundation, partners with Coleraine and other local schools. 42 they seconds is the indication from the referee. Mental health and self-care resources to refuel. Yeah, they're looking up here, looking to put some time. Oh, yeah, yeah, they, the, the, there was exactly 10 seconds to ramp off the clock. To make a tax deductible donation, all you have to do is visit their website. That's www.prestonbrown.com. So adventures in punting here for Coleraine. They do had the bad snap had two on the last play, and he's, he's kind of pooched a couple kicks. They've had two bad snaps in three games. Well, two bad snaps in two and a half games. Enjoyable and satisfying experience from sales to installation. To schedule a show appointment, all you got to do is visit their website at www. Fourth and 15 for the Cardinals. Cooper Krieg will set to punt. Max Supe. Oak Hills this time only putting one back. Are they looking to maybe It's the block? first time Supe has gone back there too, though. No, he was back there when they, they had, when they had two, and he was back when the one when the one one off the uh, helmet. Craig gets it, and the kick is blocked. The punt is blocked. That one was on Craig. That's the one thing with his height that does take a long time to get it off. Well, you saw he kind of double clutched before he kicked. It's Max Rhodes. And it is not first and goal. It will be just outside the 10. They're going to spot the ball about the 12-yard line. And they have all three timeouts left. They have two timeouts left. No matter okay, what no, the no, board, no, no, no. Don't okay. trust the board. All right. They called timeout on the Cardinals before. I trust you. First and 10 from the 12, 37 seconds, two timeouts for the Highlanders. Already lead 21-0. Snap back, Supe hit as he throws, ball is out of bounds. Oh, I tell you what, the, the defensive back knocked it out of his hand, but then he re-caught it, but his momentum took him out of the end zone. Supe was hit when he threw it. It almost worked to his favor because I think Evans might have been in a better position to Possibly intercepted the, it if it's a normal pass. Evans listed in the program is 6'3", so he's going to win a lot of jump balls. Evans is not 6'3". Evans is 5'8". I'm sorry, that was Elias Wheeler making the Set up. Cooper Cree with another deflection. Supe looking for the back man out of the backfield. Cree coming from the... Stevens event position knocks it away. Well intended for DeMar Parker Jr. So third down, 10 from the 12, 29 third seconds on the clock. On the Highlanders have two timeouts remaining. Well, empty the backfield. Fake handoff up the middles. 
Kraus trying to find something. He's going to be short of the line to gain. Bill Kraus, the keeper for Oak Hills. But he gets in on the right hash. I'm guessing that's... On the tackle for Cole Rain. Well, yeah, you got a right-footed kicker. A lot of times like the hash, and they're going to let the clock run down, use one of their remaining timeouts. Also, Sahid Davis on the tackle for the Cardinals. I'll call timeout with three set. Yep. I think they called timeout with three timeout seconds with on the clock. There's still one second on the clock, and that's all they really need. So I don't think they're going to reset. So fourth and goal, or not fourth and goal, but fourth down for their Highlanders. One second on the clock. It will be a 27-yard field goal. Well, uh, you said earlier they hadn't even attempted a field goal this year, but on the extra points, he's looked pretty solid, and this is nothing more than just a glorified extra point. He was two for two coming in, which is interesting because they scored multiple points in the first game, or multiple scores in the first game. So I don't know if they just went for two or what, or the stats could be wrong, which always happens with the manual input that goes in the GMC stats. $27 yard attempt for Oak Hills. Colerain did get close last time to blocking it. Hunter Schaus. Snap is back. Kick it. It was blocked. Blocked. Kukorin is running it back. Can you not return a block kick no, once it's I in the end zone? I think they're saying. Attempted kick, no good. Dead ball. That's Coach it. is talking to the referees. That's a returnable ball. That's an errant whistle. An inadvertent whistle. My, I, I don't know if he takes it back. If As long as he catches it, I believe if he catches it in the air, it's returnable. If once If it hits the ground in the end zone, I believe it's dead. So you know what? Even they're not going to give Colerain a touchdown here. No. Even if they are wrong, maybe the play's one dead. the play's dead. Do they run one? They can't run a non dime run play. It's the half is either over or or, or, or Oak Hills is going to get another field goal attempt because they said they blew the whistle before the play started. And I think they're gonna. Yep, they're just gonna say inadvertent whistle. The pl the half is over. I think is the indication. Yeah, it looks like coach has told his players to go to the locker room, while he continues the discussion. Normally we'd go to half here, but look, we're gonna stay here and see. If, nothing's gonna be resolved, but it's just kind of interesting to watch. Oak Hills is still on the field. That's what I said. But the coach, only thing that physically can happen because they can't get Intervert whistle, dead ball. Yeah. Or they're saying that the whistle was blown before the snap and O'Kills gets another field goal attempt. Those are the only two possible outcomes. They can't just say, oh, we made a mistake, Cole Rain would have scored and award them a touchdown. Right. But I tell you what, it is quiet in the stadium. Both everybody wondering what's going on. Coach Huber is walking away. But even if the you're right, even if the referee's wrong, nothing's gonna come out of it. Yeah. Now Oak Hill's coach comes over and mouths off to the Cole Rain coaching staff. 
and he's ha- the the, co- the Oak Hills coach is being restrained by his players. Coach Huber has already sent his team into the locker room. Like I said, there's nothing they can do. The referees no. made a mistake. They blew the whistle when they shouldn't have off of the blocked field goal. And the only resolution they have is to play dead ball. That's all they can do. The, the play's dead. It should have been a blocked kick return touchdown for the Cardinals, but they but the referees blew the whistle because they you acted can't, like you can't make that assumption. You can't yeah. make the assumption yep. that he's going to return the kick, and you're basically acting. The referee made the mistake. He treated it like an extra point, and you can't return an extra point if it's blocked or anything. It's not like college or any level. So the referee made the mistake. It hurts O'Kills because they think they should get another field goal attempt because it's an inadvertent whistle, which is not true. The, the, the only pre- team that's hurt in this case is Colray. Right. They should have. And Corey Myrick probably doesn't score that touchdown if O'Kill's he might he may, he might he might not. Well, O'Kill's defense O'Kill, stops on the O'Kill, play. Everyone stopped for yeah. O'Kill's because everyone stopped except Corey Myrick, and he wasn't even running. He was just kind of walking. And to so, High as it is, Tonight, blocked kick right there before the half, back to back, one by the O'Kill's, one by Corey. At halftime, it's Corain trailing O'Kill's. 21 nothing. So we'll try to come back here with some stats the best and some scores the best we can. Uh, we'll come back around right around three minutes right when we see the teams come out for their, their warm-ups.
And we are back here as the team, both teams are slowly making their way back down the steps. They'll reset the clock to three minutes when it reaches zero, which is the norm. Or they also had a slight delay in the band, so they'll give them that time. We'll get a couple scores going on. The unfortunate fortunate thing is it's easy for scheduling, but it means there's less games because all the GMC teams are just playing each other now. Princeton leads Lakota East 17-7 to at halftime. They kicked the field goal late in the second half. Sycamore leads Middletown 21-17. Lakota West now leaves Coleraine as the only team without an offensive touchdown. For the GMC, they lead Fairfield 28 to nothing. And Hamilton went up on top of Mason 23 to nothing. Elsewhere, Moeller trailing Indiana Powerhouse right there over there next to Bright, Indiana, right there on the border, East Central, 21-14. St. X traveled to play McCauley. Tennessee, they trail 14 to 3 at half. Elder hosting Springboro, they lead 21 to nothing. Elsewhere over there on the east side, Kings over Walnut Hills 14 to 0. And the surprise over there on the east side, West Claremont leads the presumptive favorite in Division 2, Winton Woods 13 to 7 at halftime. A couple other scores. Centerville's close enough to get a score for them. They trail 9-8. to eight. They playing baseball? To Pickering and Central. It's actually, uh, uh, well, they don't score volleyball like that anymore. No, I was going to say it's a volleyball I, score. Right, where but are you they, going? They, the volleyball score, they'd be close to finishing at 15, but volleyball, they played at 21-25 now, so that's actually not yep. a good comparison. No, just keep, keep, keep reading. And the All other score. Jokes. One of the presumptive favorites in Division One, Springfield trails a Division Three school, Trotwood Madison, 21-14. Quinton Woods actually beat that Trotwood Madison team 21-7 last week. Is that it? I mean, that's it. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's, I mean, the, yeah, we're, we're about the time of the year where everyone's playing each other, so they're not, they're not spread out with the scores. It, 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 it is a strange season here at Coleraine, but it is a strange season so far all across the entire GMC. Well, we do have a couple updates. Kings went from 14 to nothing in the, to 35 to nothing over Walnut Hills rather quickly. Princeton scores in two plays, just open the second half. They lead now 23 7 over East. That's the only updates I got. Go ahead. Sorry. All right. Oh, no, East Central kicked a field goal right before half. They lead 24-14 over Moeller. Isn't there uh, some Coring coaches out there in East Central, ex Coring. I know there was at Ross, but I don't know if they're at East Central. I don't know if they're still out there or not. But I know Bam Harrison, one, former Cardinal DB, was on the Ross staff, and I think he's on the, he's now on the Coring st defensive staff. So we'll reset. Highlanders lead Coring. 21 to nothing at half. The Cardinals did defer. So just as an explanation, the end of the half is in the half. Nothing happened. The whistle was dead. The play was dead. No return. No nothing. So yeah. um, 21 to nothing. Highlanders lead. The Cardinals did win the opening toss and deferred, so they will get the ball to start the second half. And I don't know if they've replaced um, I'm getting older. New glasses is going to, and, and my eyes are going to be bad. I don't know if we replace the bulbs here in the stadium, but the, the sheen on the field almost looks like it's wet. A little bit warranty. Yeah, it just seems exceedingly br brighter than it has in the past here. But there's a little bit of a sheen, but I don't think that's no. But even looking at, as I said, though, but new glasses, old eyes.
So see if Corey makes any adjustments in this return game. Not a big leg from this kicker, but he's found some empty space. Just popping up, laying it around the 20, uh, the 15-yard line, and Corey really hasn't had time to uh, set up any type of return. And it looks like they, uh, yeah, the deepest guys are at the 15 and 20-yard line, spread out a little bit more. So. Corey just looking for any signs of life. They need a spark here defensively, offensively. Let's get one here from the special teams. Jackson Dorsal will kick it deep. It will be turned about the 15. Ryan O'Brien finds one, breaks tackles, trying to get the edge, cuts back in, and he'll be corralled just short of the 30-yard line. Does a decent job in the return. He kind of stretched that out, reverse field, just looking for something. But at some point, you got to turn it up, and uh, good coverage by the Oak Hills Highlanders Did it mean, stayed or in their were lanes. The, the up man for Oak Hills looked way off sides. Uh, I was, did not see. Okay. But it was also one of those things where everyone else was running full speed, and the guys right next, the closest to the kicker kind of went on a delay like they weren't. They were on a different pattern. So it might have just been they were going much slower. But Short play clock. Handoff Cornus trying to find something. Nope, that was a handoff to Greg Williams. He breaks off the initial tackle, picks up about five yards all by himself. Again, I mean, he's hit at the line of scrimmage, and there's nowhere to go. Offensive line. They're really not getting any blocks on these linebackers. This second level. Anywhere to spring any type of a decent run, but decent run there, five yards. And Cardinals really basically saying, we, Greg Williams is our best player. We need to hit. Our offense needs to get something going. There's a quick hit. Burton tries to get out of the tackle. He doesn't, but he'll have enough for a Cardinal first down. On the tackle for Max Soupy. And Soupy playing a little defense, too, going both ways for Oak Hills. Sideline warning on Corain. First down, third and 40 yard line. But with Williams there in the backfield, you're basically saying. Our offense is struggling so much. We need to get points. We can make a small sacrifice on defense. Well, they, they've got some athletes, and we've seen Cornish. He's a, he's a good running back. They just – the holes aren't there. Barnes takes the snap. Quick look screen to Bryant. And he's got some space down the sidelines going forward. Penalty flag on the play. He looks beyond the spot for a uh, holding. It's downfield. Like it could be a face mask. Yeah. It's, it's interesting that the flag, I mean, it's 10 yards past the. But did he get the corner because of a hold of the wide receiver? But the, uh, what I'm saying is I, I guess he's saying he held him. So it's going to be first and eight. First and seven? Yeah, yeah it's a spot foul. We That's what I'm saying. It was a quick screen, so I'm, I'm trying to see how they would have held downfield like that because they weren't really well, he, We broke the initial tackle unless the, it was one of the guys chasing the play. I guess. It's just an odd, it's an odd spot on a wide receiver screen for a holding. It's going to be first and eight for the Cardinals. And takes away, it's going to be bigger than a 10-yard penalty from the spot because it's a spot penalty. That was probably 20 yards lost on that penalty. But it's still first down for the Cardinals. Take it, hand it off Williams, trying to find some space, cuts up, stays on his feet. It's about three yards on the carry. No kills doing a good job limiting him to just four yards right there. Actually, two, because he already had two from the That's true. penalty. So they did not Second give him the 45-yard line. 
Say the ball was at the 44 when he went down. Cardinals check the play at the sideline. Barnes takes the snap, hands it off Williams, and he is drugged down in the backfield. Greg Williams, the ball carrier for the Cardinals. Yeah, the left side of the offensive line was just blown up there, left defensive end. Met him as soon as he got the handoff, pretty much. Third down and eight, ball on the 42. Third and eight for the Cardinals. Barnes takes the snap, looks, throws, not there. Looking downfield, throws it over top, and Myrick makes the catch, but out of bounds. Out of bounds. Ball intended for Corey Myrick. Play broken up by Oak Hills, number one, Matt Soupy. Yeah, if he had a little bit more patience, a little bit more time, it'll uh, that was a good play by the sophomore quarterback. He, his initial read to the left side of the fields weren't there. He did a good job scrambling, tried to make something out of nothing. On the punt for the Cardinals. Tried to go over top to Myrick, just trying to put the ball in a difficult spot. Cardinals will be forced to punt. For the Number 24, Anthony Young and Max Super. Is it just me? Is that punter taking a couple extra steps back? Cooper Creek. It seems like a long snap. Gets it, and it's a low line drive kick, and taken by the Highlanders, trying to make something happen. Doesn't matter what happens from here on out. There's a penalty flag. Anthony Young on the return for kills. Yeah, in the area of holding, and flags could be thrown at the 32 yard line. Well, 31. Then the referee gave it a kick for an extra yard. Anthony Young with a decent return, but. It's going to be a Oak Hills penalty. Now, that being said, the last time they were forced to go the length of the field. They went the length of the they field. They went the length of the field. A personal foul face mask so against Oak Hills. The referees have yet to walk it off. No, they're yet. walking off now. What's interesting about that is they threw it as a spot foul. And I was thinking it's, if it's a personal foul, face mask wouldn't be from the end of the run. Yeah, I would agree with that. But it's not. They're going to walk it off, and it's going to be the 17-yard line. As the foul happened at the 32. Nobody from the Oak Hill side. They're complaining about this, but. Uh, either way, Cardinals it's, will take. It's, it's not take a spot it. foul. It's, yeah. Well, it is a spot foul because the return well. was out to the 40-yard line. Well, it shouldn't be. Hand off Parker up the middle. It's about four, maybe five, depending on the spot. Ethan Ritter, the ball carrier for Oak Hills. 8.50 left to play in this third quarter. On the that's the, the, is that, that's the, the little spot where you guys so see maybe Oak Hills attacking because, because – Greg Williams, they've decided we need him some points. We need him on offense, and they kind of attacked his spot right there from a linebacker position. It's going to be up to number 91, John Matheny, to step in his place on defense. Handoff, Parker. Going to push the pile forward, but he's going to be shot short of the 25-yard line. Ball carrier for a kill is number eight, Ethan Ritter. Let's see if Cole Ring can do what they haven't been able to do the entire game is get them out on a three and out. Just short of the 30, or excuse me, the 25, they need the tw just just short of the 25, they need just beyond the 27. Yeah, this is when they've done a lot of motion and, and found the running back out of the backfield. Hand off, met in the backfield, and he's, he's going to be a yard short as Parker Jr. He ain't seeing no ghost. That was Ray Parker Jr. <laughs> I'm just seeing if you paid good attention. It's a Ghostbusters reference, a now 40-year-old <laughs> movie, just for our young viewers at home. So, no kills will be forced to punt. 
Well, the, you can't sit back on your lures. That's that's the one of their best athletes back there as punter. Soup is and back. Actually, the back. Cardinals have kept Myrick and Evans have dropped deep, but they've kept their base defense on the field, anticipating a fake. This punt's going to be a little better than last time and take a Highlander roll down to the 36 of, of Coleraine. Not pretty, but effective. And I think that's a combination one that Supe has shown that he's not a very, very, very great punter. He's already shanked one. Well, he's almost looks like he's attempting the rugby style. He's he's not looking for heights. It's going to be ugly. He's looking for a roll. He just hadn't got the ball to land properly. So, you, so you're not really, you know, you're probably not going to get the best return, anyways. Kept your base defense on there to make sure on a fourth and a little over a yard that they're. North Try to sneak that one by. So 6.52 to play in the third. Cardinals trail 21-0. You got another score update handed to me. Ross 48, Northwest 3. Ross, uh, Northwest got a coach like two weeks before the season started. Good friends with the family. It's a good kid. Good kid. Barnes takes the snap. Looks quick backside to Burton. And he'll get about two, three yards in play. And, and, I, and it's a bad situation over there at Northwest, but the coach didn't like get fired or resign out of spite. He resigned because he had to fill an AD position, and by district rule or an administrator's position came up. And by district rules, you can't be an administrator and a head coach. So that was the reason for the late resignation. Uh, they needed him to be an administrator. So, anyways, gain of two on the play on first down. Quick little bubble outside and dropped. A little bit on both. A little bit on Sir Ronald Floyd there, running a little short, little 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 too shallow on his bubble, and a little on Barnes for being a little too hot with the pass. Either way, probably should have been. Ball hit him in his hands. He's got to catch that. Yeah, but well, you're being too polite. No. If he's got a bad angle on it, it's hard for his body to adjust. It's, it's not always true that if it hits you in the hands. So third down and eight, 616 left to play in the third quarter. Barnes looks to his left, and then his right. Throws. He's got a man open who drops it. He would have had to make a play. Incomplete pass for the Cardinals. Tended for Sir Ronald Floyd. He had some space. He was short of it would have been short of the first down on the catch. And went ahead to make somebody miss, but he had plenty of space to, to make that happen. But he's got to make the catch first, and the Cardinals are forced to punt. Back to kick for the Cardinals, Cooper Crew. What is that bird? That bird is, sorry. Bird just dropped in the middle of the field. I believe it's a sandpiper. That's a pretty looking bird. Uh, snap back. Good punt by Krieg, but it might be too good coverage, not out kicked. Good job trapping him in a good punt. Maybe Max one, two yards for Max Supi. You just don't see an iridescent bird like that too often, especially at night. Sorry, I got really distracted. I, well, I looked up, and at first I thought it was a bad. It, you know, as I said, I, I think it's these, these new light bulbs. They, they attract, if you look across, too. They attract the bugs, which attracts the predators. We don't really see usually see birds with, like, there's, like, iridescent wing. I don't know, Sorry. Completely irrelevant. 6.03 to play in the third quarter. Highlanders first down. Brandon saw something shiny. I saw something. There he is. He's back. He's shiny. There's multiple birds, Brandon. It's not just one. It could be. He, he's fast. All right, back to the game. First down, Highlanders, their own 29. Up three scores. Supe in motion. They're going to hand it off to Parker. He's going to find some space, and he's done a good job tonight of falling forward. After the initial the contact, the he's going to fall points. forward for seven, maybe yep, seven yards on the play. Yep. The nope, they move the chain, uh, the stick a little more, and it will be eight on first. Also saying battle holes. I tell you what, the long sustained drives by Oak Hills, this defense again this week has been out there a long time. So that, that, that short little run. That's been there in the middle, two and three yards could turn into four, seven, just wearing out this Coleraine defense. 
hand up. Parker, he makes battle Holmes miss in the backfield. And it was a good job by Zane Battle Holmes there in the backfield, but he's a defensive tackle trying to catch a running back in the backfield. Parker Jr. gets able to run away. Short game, but it's enough to pick up a first down. Yeah, he picks that up because it's a good block on the outside by the wide receiver. You got one-on-one -on -one against the defenders right there, and that time the Oak Hills Highlanders outside won the individual battle. Ball out to the 44-yard line, first down. Pass out in the flat to Supe. Dancing around, he's going to fly forward. Be close to a first down. It's a complete pass to number one, Max Supe, for kills. On the tackle for Cole Rain, Cooper Creek. Again, I am impressed with the way Oak Hills kind of mixes up the plays. You think you're defending the running back, and then they use the, the wing. They've thrown to the tight ends. Second down and two from the 48. Oak Hill's taking their time, a little quick, a little out. Supe breaks the initial tackle, still on his feet, not going to get escape, but he's got enough for another first down. On the tackle for Cole Rain, Cooper Creek. They're just attacking that soft spot in the Cardinal defense out of the slot. Well, and the Cole Rain defensive back, they're giving him a pretty good cushion. They haven't really beat them deep at all. They're almost giving up those four yards well, it's the same to keep them underneath. It's the same spot they used the tight end in in the first half, just over top of the defensive end underneath the safety. Handoff, Parker Jr. Stays on his feet, breaks some tackle down the sidelines. On, Jr. First down, no kills. Let's Yeah, this Coleraine defense is getting tired. That's what happened last week against Middletown. Middletown really inefficient all, all night, dominated really by that Coleraine defense, but offense was not doing that without any help. Just wore down defensively. It will mark him out of bounds a yard short, second and one from the 31. Highlander met in the Big backfield. Play. Hayden Danielson with the tackle. I think he lost a yard. Parker Jr. will half lose, yard. lose a half yard. They'll give him this forward progress. It'll be third and one. Yeah, not sure if he was blitzing or on that or just a, a clean read, but he was there right as the handoff. This would be a really good spot if I mow kills for play action. Yeah. You're up three scores. You could take this chance. Because, really, if you don't make this on you're third down, you're going forward on fourth down, on fourth down yeah. I would immediately. I, well, they go with an. They go. They put out a pull fullback in the backfield this time. And they're just going right behind him. Handoff, Parker. He needs the thirty. Got the twenty-nine. He got Parker the thirty. Jr. On the carry for the Islanders. Taken down by Cardinals number ten, Cooper Creek. Yeah, when the hometown uh, flag crew flips the down marker before the referee calls well, it. Well, he needed to get to 30 and the ball is placed across yeah, the 30. Yeah, that's what so. I mean. We didn't have to wait for the referee to call it there. I think the chains were actually Our trying chain to gang called it first. Well, I think the chains were actually kind of tangled or they would have been set already. So Kraus working at no rush here. Oak Hill's up three, 225. Highlanders 21. Corain zero, third quarter winding down. Well, they're running the clock all the way down, play clock down to seven. Little toss sweep to the outside. Cooper Krieg keeps contained and makes the tackle. What year is Krieg? He's just the junior. entire linebacking core is junior. Yeah, that's about to say. I mean, he got started as, as as a sophomore last year, and he's put on some all size there. But he took he took on the offensive tackle right there, threw him away, and made contact. So to limit a that less that guy's going to be a player. That was the H back. That was not a tackle, but yes, he did a good job there. 
Craig Williams and Danielson, really the three junior linebackers, form the core there of the potential D1 players on that defense. Maybe he'll fall a little short in the measurables. Handoff Parker Jr. He is met at the line of scrimmage and brought down 52. 51, Javante Burnett with another tackle up front. He's had a big game. Battle Holmes Burnett. Down at eight on the Up front have been pretty pretty solid for the Cardinals. Oak Hill's eating up a lot of clock here. One thirty left to play in this third quarter. Up twenty one to nothing. Third down and eight. They need just over the twenty yard line. Again though, you think this will be four down territory. Hand off Parker Jr. and he's gonna be just short of the twenty five. Interesting, uh, being four down territory, I think they want a little bit more. A fourth down and five is got a Coleraine player down. Brought down by Cardinals, Cooper Creed. So 57 seconds left in the third quarter. Yeah, Corey just unable to keep any kind of uh, offense going. Corey player is up walking off for his own. That just kind of might have been fatigue. It's one of your linebackers. So 57 seconds left in this third quarter. Oak Hills facing a... a Fourth down and five at the Coleraine 25. You know, when we started, you said, hey, I got to run the camera. Why don't you take care of all the downs and distances, all the numbers no, things? No, so I don't no, have no, to no. I, I can do down and distance. It's it's the jersey numbers and roster. I don't have time to look down at there. So fourth down. Watch Krause the ball. Takes yep. the snap. Quick look. Not there. Forced to scramble and incomplete. The Cardinals take over. Yeah, they were looking kind of the hitch and go to their six foot three wide receiver on the outside, but a little bit of pressure kind of threw a little delay and threw the timing off of that play, and he just had to force that to force the throw he didn't want to make. Coin does make a stop. I don't know if it was necessarily hitch and go, but they ran the hitch under with the outside receiver with the corner route over top of it, trying to get a little something different. Right, to whether there. the hitch and go was a clear out for the hitch and under. Yeah. Yep. Either way, a, a Coleraine does make the stop. 48 seconds left in this third quarter. See if the Cardinals can get something going offensively. Their biggest play was called back on that last Still possession. got two yards off of the holding penalty, but. Barnes takes it. Quick out look. And get a flag. Complete pass for the Cardinals. Ryan O'Brien. Ryan O'Brien. Quick catches on the bubble. On the play. They're going to call a block on the back on Burton. It'll be first and 25. See, that's that's tough as a wide receiver. You You're making initial contact with the defensive back, but he kind of turns to make that play. So you got to know when to release that block. So that it, that's a spot foul. That's going to be a big one. So Colerain, again, digs himself deeper into the hole. It's going to be an illegal use of the hands, actually. Block the call. Back. It's a block. Yeah. So it's going to make it first down and 25, 25. from the 15. Actually, first and 20. Hand off. A little draw play. Trying to get something positive moving forward. And he gets Tristan a good Cornish chunk of the back. The the Tristan Torres. Could have given him five. Cornus, yes. Eh, maybe even six. Uh, I tell you what, he shows some elusiveness. He just they, the Cardinals just haven't given their backs any room to run, and and Cornus just had the two biggest runs of the year. He's shown that he's capable. He just is 
He leads the Cardinals in rushing, but it's just not very many rushing yards. Barnes, quick screen out to Burton, and he drops it. Another one. That does stop the clock with one second left in the third quarter. It's going to be third and 15 from the 20. Ten seconds on the play clock. <laughs> Snaps back, looks. Has Bryant in the open field. Makes the catch and he's off to the races down the sidelines. Cuts back across the 40 into Oak Hills territory. So they went a little bit of play action. They faked that wheel route, which brought the defensive backs over outside the hash and just found that seam route right there. If given time, this young quarterback has shown he can throw the ball. That's the final play of the third quarter. After three quarters of play, it's the Oak Hills Highlanders 21, the Coran Cardinals 0. It'll be first down for the Cardinals at the Oak Hills 37. So. Thank you. So going into the fourth quarter, three scores is, is 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 big when you haven't scored at all this year. But you you want a confidence builder for the for, for the rest of the season here. You want to put something together. This gives a little bit of confidence as quarterback. If you can put something here, two scores with ten minutes left on the clock in the fourth quarter, despite your offensive struggles, is not unreachable. It, it, right now, Corrin's in a position to make this a competitive game right now. It hasn't been up until this point, but they are now in a position to make this a two-score game with a with the majority of a, the fourth quarter to play. First down, Cardinals. Barnes takes it. Little back side hook, and that'll be seven yards for Corey Myron. For the They've thrown that a whole bunch. And number nine, the Oak Hills outside linebacker. He's tipped two. He's missed about six, but he's just threading the needle right there. You give him a 31, so it's just six yards of a catch. Williams now in at running back. Handoff, takes it up the middle. Williams still pushing forward. Rick Williams on the carry for the Cardinals. I, guess, I believe we might have hit it. Kind of an, I don't want to call it another uh, inadvertent whistle, but as late as the whistle's been gone on some of these runs here, I, that one. The, he broke the free because they blew the whistle. Yeah, it's, it's for you. He was a couple of the offensive linemen went to the ground, and I'm, these referees might have thought that was the running back. I don't know. It was, it's one of. The, it's, it, I'm not saying that it's absolutely. I'm correct here, and that's what's wrong. But it was. I, I, we I haven't. Don't, had, I don't think that was an egregious error like the one at the end of the first. No, half. no. But we haven't had that many quick whistles like that on the pile moving. Ball tipped in the air. And the offensive line's got to know they can make uh, – you saw two uh, Coran offensive linemen just let it fall. At that point, they, the ball's tipped by the defense. You can catch it. Yeah, and that ball's tipped again by number nine. They're, they're just – Heath Anderson. Ball spotted on the third. So Coran on fourth down and a long two has got to keep the offense out there. Yeah, you don't really have a choice at this point, but Greg Williams will go to the Wildcat quarterback. And we get a timeout call. Coach oh, wow. Huber running down. Didn't like what he saw on that fourth down and two, so Corrine's going to burn up one of those timeouts. And it's Again, this is a big play, so it's, it's – Again, can't hold nothing back. Yeah, you don't mind it if he sees something that he didn't like, and it's a big fourth down play. 
But that's kind of kind of a little slight interesting there because Coach Huber doesn't call the offensive plays. But yeah, we also don't know. But he has a headset on, so we also yeah, don't right. know. We don't know if someone could from be the, shouting, yeah. "Hey, hey, hey!" Call the timeout. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, sometimes we've got the pleasure of being next to the coaching staff, so we can we can hear the yells and screams and the throwing clipboards and the bottles of pop flying off the walls. That we we're nowhere near them today. I can tell you last week by myself at the Middletown game. You got right to next sit, to you got coaches, to sit, sit I could with t- the I could tell you which offensive plays were going to work and which weren't. As Greg Williams takes it, fourth down. He's just going to go. Takes it up. Got enough for the first down. Stone his feet across the 20. I could have told you last week which plays were just dead on arrival because the, the coaching staff next to me are like, what are they doing? Well, that's not right. By, couple, by not lining up right? Yes. Or? Yeah, okay. yes. There was a couple of times last week where that, uh, – the formations were flipped a couple times. Williams is going to stay in at running back. 10-26. Inside the 20-yard line. Takes it a little high on the snap. Breaks the tackle on the backfield. He's got to make something out of nothing, and he does. Gets it downfield inside just short of the 10-yard line. Williams, the keeper for the Cardinals. And as much as he has struggled all year, that was actually a pretty good block on the edge by 69. To Oops. Good job, camera man. Well, I'm trying to make an adjustment because they're about the spot of the field in the one one corner. Yeah, we'll that apologize we, that, time. that we can't by see. By the design of the booth, there's one corner of this end zone we can't see. Williams hands it off to Myrick. He's got nowhere to go. The outside makes no one miss. He does get close to the original line of scrimmage. You know what? At a second short, I don't mind that because that now the linebackers have to respect that. Now what play are you going to run off of that? Yeah, that was one, though, that they didn't bite. So Myrick was hoping that. They would all be collapsing, and he could get to the edge. He just yeah, give O'Kill's credit on him. Yeah, there was yeah. there were four 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 uh, well, players out there. None of them fell for the fake. The, the one guy kept his contain. The other ones could clean it up. But if you can get him chase that outside run, run underneath. Williams takes it, finds some space up the middle. He's in for six. Touchdown, Corey Cardinals. Greg Williams, the first. Offensive touchdown of the year for the Cardinals. Williams gets to take the touchdown, but give that, give the quarterback from Colerain uh, all the credit. The, he gets down there because of good plays. Williams gets to finish, but his teammates did a lot of the work. Offensive line does their job on that play. Colerain with their first touchdown of the year. <laughs> and the whole. <laughs> and the Cardinals. Haven't kicked an extra point all year, so there's a little confusion. Well, Who's supposed to be on there? Well, they, I, Oak Hills had some confusion, too. I think they had too many. Corey didn't have enough, and we had too many. Kick is up. Kick is good with 9.23 to play. The Cardinals get on the board. They try the Highlanders 7-21. to 21. Is it too early for an onside kick? Yeah, there's no need. There's plenty of time on the clock. I'm not saying they should. That's why I pose it as a question. Yeah, but I could po- pose a question to say is the is is the sky made of gr- green cheese? It doesn't make it a. It's a question. I'm just asking it. Doesn't make it a, not a stupid question. No, it's how you answer it that makes it either proves it's a stupid question or you get and a I stupid did. I answer. And I did. I proved it was a stupid question. Nine twenty-three left in this ball I game. I just Cole. said this. I just I'm said this. I'm changing the subject. I know poorly. Also, we'd like to thank our friends at Bluff Motors, Cloverdale Healthcare. I don't get paid enough to put up with you. You get paid. Our booster silver cardinal level donors, and we thank them too for their support. Is this right? The scores are all crazy this week. Loveland is beating Milford, a team that really rolled through their first two weeks. Loveland's up four scores at the end of three quarters on Milford, who was – people are talking about actually being one of the top teams in the Region 4. It, this is a topsy-turvy year everywhere. Yeah. 
trying to find some other scores. 30 to 3, 13 Vikings on top of Lakota East. See a couple uh, white helmets here on this coverage team. Yeah, the Cardinals, the two German twins have played on special teams, the all-white helmets, the two freshmen. Have seen some special teams times. McAfee kicks a little pop-up. There's no one there. If the Cardinals can get to it, Supe does a good <laughs> job of coming up with it. I tell you what, and sometimes uh, some of the hardest contacts are on ugly balls like that. I'm Honestly, glad, glad that both uh, both uh, Supe and whoever uh, I didn't see the Cardinal number. The hit. It was one of the German twins, but both of them coming up a little slow because you really you're selling out for that and you're going down at kind of an unnatural position to cover that ball. Leaves yourself susceptible. And, but, and again, uh, more nobody raises, hurt. More crazy scores. The defending Region Four champion Moeller is losing 31-14 to East Central with eight. the second best running back in the country. Yeah. Final front with a running clock. Lakota West beats Fairfield 33 nothing. How far is Fairfield falling off? I mean, they've still got the quarterback. Play action. Hits Supe in the flat. Rashid Dav Saheed Davis. Saheed Davis. Number one, Matt Supe. Supe's going to pick up about five yards. Yeah, Oak Hills might have gone a little bit well, vanilla with that last drive that the Cardinals out. started on. I believe giving up that score, bringing it that two scores, they're going to back, open the playbook back up, and we're going to see a lot of that play action that was so effective. Second Tell you what, three. there's one team that everyone thought was going to be struggling this year, but it's not. Two. Sycamore scores again. They lead Middletown 35-17. And I, just, I, I watched them last time. I guess this running back that they've got is, is, is superior because they don't throw the ball like they have in the past. The kid was getting 25, 30 Prowse. carries a game. Beats one man in the backfield, and he's got a sidelines that picks up a first down. Brandon Smith hit him dead to rights in the backfield. Good job by Will Krause to make a miss and pick up the first down. And the team many picked to win Region 4. Now, less of an impact because it's out of state, but St. X trails the team in from Tennessee 28-3. to St. Ignatius. Perennial power is lose is being running clocked by a Catholic school from Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Central Catholic. So. Oh, that's yeah, Central Catholics are one of the top programs in the country. You just say Central Catholic in yeah, like yeah, half yeah, the yeah, city. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Cities in the country, Central Catholics uh, powerhouse. Too. So first down and ten, ball spotted at their own thirty-eight year old, thirty-seven yard line. Cardinals looking for a stop. Kraus keeps it. Williams with the stop. We got about one, maybe two Kraus, yards in the carry. Yeah, Krause hadn't had many runs, hadn't kept it himself much. He's at back-to-back -back ones. We are about he's kept it. We are about the time with the running clock innovation that some of these games are going final. Final with the running clock. Hamilton 37-6 to over Mason. Bit of a surprise there. That Mason team never, never, never flashy, but always one of those teams that's going to, every game was going to be 20-10, 2017. Hamilton showing off here this week. Oh, kills. Trying to keep their lead here against the Cardinals. Second and nine. Quick hit and incomplete. I'll tell you what, they, they just run a, a quick little button hook at the outside. But it was Myrick that undercut that. If that pass is thrown where it's catchable for wide receiver, I believe Myrick gets that. So he had to throw it to the outside where the receiver had to die for it. Incomplete pass, stop the clock, 742. Third down and 10. Can the Corey defense stop? Step up right here. Kraus. Takes it, looks. Backside under pressure, throws it, and incomplete. Nice catch there on the sidelines by 88, whose name I don't have. Uh, Elias Wheeler, but he was out of bounds. It'll be fourth down. And stops the clock. 7.39 left to play. Oak Hills helped out a little bit earlier by some bad snaps, getting short field. See if Cole Rain. We, we've seen Supi. One thing he hasn't done, he hadn't had great kicks, but he's also had no returns on his kicks. 
Cameron Evans and Corey Myrick back deep. Not a great one. Myrick. Gotta just and that's that's the that's the benefit of having, having the pit, yeah. having the non traditional punter. Yeah. Myrick it was in a spot where he really couldn't get a good run underneath it. He's in a spot where he can't really play the bounce afford to play the bounce, so he has to let it go. Oh, and we said that earlier. I mean, he gets the kicks, and he's got the bad bounces. And a 20-yard punt yeah. bounces and turns into a 40-yard punt. Maybe not quite a 40-yard. Well, no, yeah, one, it's, no, it's about a 40-yard right punt. right about there. 7-24, Cardinals down two scores. Final from the pit and Elder. They beat Springboro 28-7. Motion man, Barnes has it, fakes the jet sweep going deep. Got the wheel. And he Burton, caught it. Burton on the post wheel with the catch and a first down in the Highlander territory. I'll tell you what, quarterback makes the wrong decision right there. He had the wheel with nobody but, on him. He throws into double coverage, but I know what you're going to say. He made the right decision no, he because didn't. he made the play. The post wheel, the wheel was unguarded. Absolutely wide open. But He yeah. threw to the double team to the post, but Terrell Burton just jumps up and gets it. I tell you, Burton's dropped a couple of those short little swing passes, but get him deep, and he's got to stick him on those hands. Cardinals first down into... Territory out to Bryant, high pass. That's a live ball, maybe. It should have been. Uh, that very, very, been. very close to it. That should have been. That should have been a backwards pass. But they are going to say it was incomplete. That was a backwards pass. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Ryan O'Brien goes down. I think he might have hurt That's, himself. He's cramping. Okay, so he said one of those where he stretched for a high pass and might have stretched too much in the wrong direction. So what this does, it gives you gives your uh, offense a little bit of time to uh, think about the next next play. Six fifty five on the clock. Coring down fourteen points. It is second down and 10. The ball is on the Oak Hills just outside the 40. Some semblance of normalcy. Witten Woods is finally taking the lead back from West Central or from West Claremont, 21-13. Claremont left, lost their best, best player to a transfer. And Chris Henry Jr. transferred to Withrow as Bryant is out. A freshman running back for Witten Woods has two touchdowns. There has been talk about him forever. They say he it could be the the next. Right. I don't know who, but yeah, you they don't, even at lower levels, but especially at a place like Witten Woods, you wouldn't expect a freshman running back. But yeah, that. everybody said watch out for him coming up because I mean they've got a couple good running backs there already. So, but they say they he could be the best. He's once once in a lifetime player. And that includes Mayan Williams, who started as a freshman there and now a running back at Ohio State. Second and 10 for the Cardinals, 6.55 on the clock. Take it back. That is Double a backwards pass. pass. And it's not there, but Myra can run the other way, and he will. He just squeezes oh. and just tackled, but gets about six yards on the play. He was looking downfield, and he had a small window to it. And I tell you what. That defensive end did a great job getting off a blocker because Myrick, if he once if he got past that guy, he had open field. Third and five on the thirty-six. Third and five for the Cardinals. Looks like Colerain's going to bring uh, Williams back in. They have the Wildcat. They know this is four-down territory, but they do have to hurry. That ten seconds on the play clock just get in the line. And the Cardinals will have to burn a timeout. This is the case when those timeouts, again, you, you don't want to lose the five yards here, but timeout timeouts are getting precious. 6.04 left to play. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you're thinking about buying or 
are selling the home, we invite you to contact the Shuck Group of Star One Realtors because it's all about tradition of trust and a family of integrity. Known as Coleraine's Realtor for decades, Coleraine Boosters Gold. So resetting, 6.04 on the clock. The Cardinals Shuck with just one timeout and trail by Give two scores, 21-7-0 kills. Third down and a long six. I'm trying to tell you to put the well, on stoppage and play to put it on the scoreboard, but it's fine. 6-0-4, 21-7. I'm not a cameraman. I'm just trying to help you out. Third and five for the Cardinals. They've gone to the Wildcat with Greg Williams. Takes it. Looking, and he breaks a tackle. It's going to be just short. Just short. Greg Williams on the carry for Cole Ray. He needed to cross the 30-yard line. He's down on about the 31 and a half. Nope, they're going to mark him 32. On the tackle for Williams getting up a little answer. slow right there. <laughs> One of his <laughs> offensive linemen, to see if he's okay, he goes, get off me, I got this. Got to like the fight in this young man. Fourth down and two. Quick snap, go right away. Williams first down. gets the first down. But with Williams huffing and puffing, it might be a good time to shift the regular offense on the field. And that's exactly what they're doing. Well spotted on the 28. Right. But they are burning up a little bit of time. Two receivers at either side. Quick look outside. Ricardo Lofton has it. And he's a small guy, so he needs a small window. That was one where you're like, he's going to break right through that hole. And yeah, he didn't, he didn't catch it cleanly, yeah. and that kind of took off the timing a little bit. He hits that hole so fast, you're like, oh, he's going to zoom right through. But he is. I, <laughs> Terrell Burton, nice play. He runs. For, He's trying to save the Cardinals clock. He runs and go gets the ball. The referee dropped it, runs and gets it, throws it to the referee back to his spot. That was something you don't see a run regular. 4.30 now on the clock. Cardinals with a sense of urgency. Handoff, Cornist, and he had his hole, but again, backside closes. Cornist, the ball carry for Coleraine. Taken down by Mac. Cornish had a hole, but that backside just kind of collapsed on him. Hey, these referees are slow getting this ball placed. Well, that one was on Cornish. He, threw, yeah, it he threw it to the wrong He threw it to the wrong Don't referee. throw it to the white hat. Throw it to the guy in the middle. So third and eight. Four yeah. minutes left to play. The Fox slant's there. Hits his man. He's got enough for a first down to Terrell Burton. Down to the 11. 3.50 on the clock. You know, that little skinny post has been the, the spot in, in the uh, zone there if he's given time to throw. Wildcat back out there, and this is something the Cardinals got to go quick because they only have one timeout if they score. Williams takes it, cuts back, finds a seam still up. He's across it, down to the six. The thing is, now you're putting yourself, you could have scored quick, a little quicker and maybe not had to go for an onside kick. And if you're kick. throwing the ball in an incomplete pass, stops the clock. But, yeah. Timeout, O'Kills. O'Kills, thank you. 3.17 to play. Second and goal. Ball spotted on the six. How you like that, Brandon? There, see? You just good? reset it every once in a while so everyone can see where on stoppages is play. That's all, all anyone asks for. I mean, Mike would have done a lot better and faster than you just did, but I'm just giving you a hard time. <laughs> hey, I've had to call these games the first two weeks by myself. I, you can I suck it up absolutely a bit. appreciate it. And as much as I like to hear the sound and of my not, voice. And not only that is that we have gone to opposing schools. The games have both been away, and they haven't had room for us in the booth. So you guys have been in the stands. You've been on top of the, of the uh, press box. So 
Third and five from the six. Wildcat, Greg Williams takes it, goes, breaks the tackle, stays on his feet, still up, fighting, close to the one-yard line. He'll Is that a first down now? Just short of the first down, so the clock will continue to run. Oak Hill's content to let the clock run. Under three now, quickly to the line. Third and one. Williams takes it, and he's just going to fall forward, pile through, and another Cardinal touchdown. 2.47 to play. I tell you what, you take away those the block punt, the bad snap, and giving the short fields, really other than that Coleen uh, defense has done their jobs tonight. They're going to be tested in one more time right here. Only one timeout left for the Coleraine Cardinals, so we're probably going to probably see an onside attempt kick. And you're right at the edge of it as we get this extra point of tap. Snap is down. Kick is good with 2.47 to play in the game. Cardinals get it to within a touchdown and an extra point. HRO kills 21-14. Was Mike quicker than that? That was good. But you are. You really are on the edge, especially with one timeout of... If with a timeout and a stops and a three and out, you can. You have to get the immediate three and out. You can't allow one first maybe, down if you don't do it. You're maybe looking to get in the ball right around two minutes, maybe back. But if you kick it deep and get that quick three and out, you have a shorter field to drive. But you're chancing that you have to get it there. So it'll be interesting to see here. By the way, I don't know statistic wise, even at the upper levels. It's less than 50-50 you cover that. At the high school level, it's probably even lower cover, than that. Cover what? Yeah, cover an onside kick here. Oh, it's it's probably more likely in high school than in, in, in the higher levels. In the NFL, I think it was like less than, like I think it was like 6 or 7%. So okay. With the new rules where you can only have, you have to have, even, you can't have odd numbers. Can't on overload it. one can't side. Can't overload yep. one side. So they are lining up, it looks like, for the onside kick. I tell you what, they're not doing it. They're, yes, but if they kick it deep, there's, there's nobody no there. There's one player from the Oak Hills, about the 25, and if he can't get to that, I'd pop that up to the 30 on the snow. And uh, he covers it. But you know what? Very little time, no return. Cover for Oak Hills. And probably the deepest possession off a kickoff we've had. He did not get that. You want that half hop. That half hop pop up. Didn't happen, but. So 245 left to play. Colerain yeah. down by seven. Oak Hills with two timeouts. Colerain with and, one timeout. And that was a read of the return. They saw, saw that Oak Hills was lined up for their onside recovery. So they tried to kick it in that little spot where the defense had vac or the return team had vacated. Greg Williams has been a warrior here playing both ways in the second half. Uh, coaching staff was kind of let, sitting him down with stop that, but uh, his teammates called him out. Said, Greg, we need you out here. Let's make a play. The young man, I think, yeah, is the, not going to let that let that let his teammates down. I don't think he's going to let himself down. 245. First now we, we, we got the referees discussing something. There was a flag on the kickoff. I don't know what for. In the fourth quarter, McCall 28, St. X 3. And in the fourth quarter, East Central 31, Muller 14. Are they calling offsides? Yeah. They called offsides on Colerain. So, so have to they actually get another shot at it. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not going to complain except for the half of your team just ran the length of the field. Especially one Corey Myrick is probably now, yeah. Oak, Oak Hills coach is now consulting with the re referee. If I'm him, can he, he decline it? He, if I'm him, I'm declining. He, he doesn't it. want to give Corey another shot. Yeah. Does Even he, if you does have, he have that option? I don't know. Even if you have your return team out Since there. Since it's, it, it's, it's pre-play. It's pre-play. They might not have a choice. They can't decline it. And, and if you're, you're right there, he probably – you got – Wait, wait. Did you just say yeah, I'm right? Yeah, you're right. right. 
<laughs> you have the ball. You don't even want as, – as unlikely as it is that Coleraine recovers this ball, you already got the ball. You yeah. don't want to have a chance of the other team to get it back, no matter how unlikely an well, onside The only – I mean, one of the bad things here is that you, lost you lose four, 10 yards. And four seconds. Well, five, you, five yards and four seconds. Just – okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Normally kill 40, they're kicking off 35. I'll give up five yards for another shot. If you give up four seconds, so, you know, we'll find out here as the game whether those four seconds mean anything. Get a hop. This time it will be an onside kick. And just got that first hop that you wanted, just not that second big one that you wanted. Well, and, and, the, and the, the front line, it did bounce off the hands. There was another Oak Hills Highlander Kane just Powell behind me to catch at. Kane Powell with the recovery. So, Oak Hills gets the recovery of the onside and gains about 20 yards. 25 yards. Nah, it, it, yeah, it, it was at just inside out, outside the 25, and it's almost at the 50. So, yeah. Now there's another. Oh, a discussion. They, Oak Hills just didn't get a football in the field. Now, that did give Greg Williams time to get some rest, but it does 242. Highlanders just really need a first down, and they can seal it here. Handoff Parker, Jr., and he's going to get about half of it right there. Uh, someone's calling for a fumble, but I believe that was after the play was already blown dead. Actually, going to give him six yards on the carry. And that's and with the result of first down, you almost have to kind of you almost hold on to this timeout because you know what he's got a short second down. He you, might you call it on third down, fourth yeah. down. But I mean, this is four down territory. No, They're no. Gonna, they not get if you're that, kills. You're punting this on fourth down no matter what. Well, you could say well, let's, it's if it's short as, enough. If, if, if you get third down and you know if you get fourth down and less than two, two yards, yeah, you could say we're going to win right here. I can see that too. Supe in motion. Handoff, Parker Jr. is going to ah. stand his feet and get the first down. The more Parker Jr. on the carry for the Islanders. I think Colrain kind of standing him up there trying to strip the ball. Offensive line gets a little Good bit of extra push Jr. there. Yeah, that was definitely a case of he probably had, the, had enough to be close to the first down, but you're holding up trying to make the strip. This is where those timeouts, you know, you're okay to give up one, but that second timeout you had to burn really is going to come back. But really, so they're but sticking Oak with the shotgun. Oak Hills did what Oak they Hills had. can almost take a knee. Oak Hills did what, some time. Oak Hills did what they had to do. They got that for initial first down. Handoff, Parker Jr. Cooper Krieg with a good tackle. Colrain's going to burn their last time out. DeMar Parker Jr. on the carry for the Islanders. On the tackle for Colrain. Or did they? Creed. No, that's the Cardinals' last time out. Okay. Uh, well, I, they weren't coming off the field like there was a timeout. So you're right on the edge here. Second and 12 on the 42. If you're Oak Hills, you could take two knees and reasonably 50 seconds, roll it down to 23. You'd probably, get a, probably gain about 10, 5 to 10 seconds of, of leg time from the referees. You could conceivably hold this until fourth down. Does this quarterback just take the snap, kill some time, not even That's what I'm saying. I think they can just run the clock out at this point. Yeah. Because you're going to get 25 seconds that rolls off after you – before third down and 25 seconds before fourth down by the time you take the time of the play and then however long it takes the referees to reset in between plays you're going to be close to Oop. you're going to be at 20 seconds exactly if you do that without any sort of human error in there so you're looking at 10 seconds before you have to punt and uh, Parker Jr. finding some space and, and a point is moved making it all move DeMar Parker Jr. on the carry for appeals Colrain selling, selling out pretty much committed to the uh, right side, and they went left. Both spotted on the 28. 
So with a minute to play, no timeouts. They're for still Card- going to the shotgun. I mean, if, they haven't had a bad snap. They, I mean, that's what mean, they do. If that's what you do, that's what you do. He's in, they're in victory formation. Forty-five takes the knee and. That will do it. That will be the last play. So Cardinals come back, comes up short. The blocked punt and the inadvertent whistle on the blocked field goal would end up being the difference here. It will, as the clock runs towards zero, it will be the Oak Hills Highlanders 21, the Colerain Cardinals 14. Thanks, yeah. for, thanks for everyone for listening. We'll be back next week again at home. The Cardinals will play host to the Sycamore Aviators. And that concludes tonight's varsity football game here at Cardinal Stadium so, at Corey High School. We'll see you next week. Final score, Oak Hills 21, Cardinals 14. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to thank you for coming out tonight on this Friday night. For the boys